Welcome to West Coast Wednesday here on Prospectors Radio with Kathleen Biffle, Rich Cooley, Scott Swiftwater Tony, Indiana Gold Hunter, Dennis Dayton, and your host, Tim Grimes. We hope you enjoy the show and thanks again for listening. All right, everybody, welcome back to another West Coast Wednesday here on Prospector Radio. I'm your host, Tim Grimes, and joining me as always, we got Kathleen Biffle. Shad Biffle, Rich Cooley, Scott Swiftwater Tony, and believe it or not, the Indiana Gold Hunter himself, Mr. Dennis Dayton, is here tonight. What's going on, guys? Hey, Tim. <laughs> How are you? Everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, everybody. What is hello, happening? Hello, hello. Oh, what's happening? Yeah, what is happening? Got a hurt hand. I, wait, wait, wait. I seen that. What did you do? <laughs> Uh, over the weekend, I was chiseling rocks uh-huh. for Koi Pond, and the vibration irritated my carpal tunnel. Uh-oh. So now I'm just, it was excruciating pain at the beginning of the week. It's getting better. Uh-huh. I got brace on, but uh, I got to just rest it till we go to Alaska. Till Alaska. Got a six inch dredge for two weeks. Yes. <laughs> Let, let's be honest. You, you took a swing at me and hit me in no. the face. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it was or was? Or oh, was... I'm pretty sure I remember it that yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, that's how you remember it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, seen, I seen this brace. I'm like, oh, what did she do? I thought maybe you fell or something. I'm telling you, I am just, my, my mind wants to do things, uh-huh. but my body won't let me. Yeah, right. That's, I kind of understand. <laughs> but um, I'm hanging in there. Is it is it hurting right it. now? Huh? Is it hurting right now? Um, No, I've got it rested. So it's I've better. had it on all day. Okay. It, it'll start going numb. Gotcha. Once, uh, it's like when your leg falls asleep. Right. Jeez. Like constantly. No. It feels like that. That sucks. So... Yeah, I, I uh, seen the picture. So you said your rock moving arm, and I was getting ready to make a joke. I was like, "Well, the rock on your finger is looking pretty heavy too." <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot, of, got a lot of compliments on that ring. <laughs> it wasn't a ring picture, though. It was a look. No. My arm's in a brace. I like, dang it! <laughs> I'm going to Alaska in two weeks. I don't need this now. This is not when you need this to happen. So two no. weeks, two weeks of rest, though. It's sh- Hopefully it's okay if. You know. Yeah, the bad thing is I, you know, type. Yeah, well, that's bad. true too. That's not gonna make mm-hmm. it any easier on the healing process. The, the good thing is she isn't hitting me anymore either. Yes, this is always a good thing. <laughs> She's really weak with her left, so I can take it fine. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's nothing, right? But now she she can't help put the rocks back in the koi pond though either. I, I rolled them. Oh, you she are? Rolled, You're still doing well, it? She's still, she's still helping. Oh, yeah. wow, she, she ain't no lightweight. Stop. I figured she'd stop and just say, oh, that's it, Chad. I was rolling it with the other hand. <laughs> like I told her, she still has one good hand. Yeah. Get the work. <laughs> you kid. That's right. There ain't nothing wrong with that left one. You can still lift a rock. You can yeah. run a dredge. Fine. I, I, I feel confident about it. It'll be okay. Looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah. But maybe I'm just so excited that I just don't really. I think you're gonna do it no matter if you're hurt or not. It's not gonna. Matter. Yeah. It's not I'm gonna matter. Creative. You'll work. <laughs> you'll work through the pain, and then when you're on your way home, you'll be in misery, but it'll be worth it. So. Always, you can always still just use one arm and then keep moving the hose with your leg. <laughs> <laughs> She'll well, figure it out. Like She'll... I said, I gotta get creative. That's right. Like... She will improvise. What she'll do. Well, we got our hoods in the mail and we sat around with those on our heads. <laughs> Everything fitting like a glove. <laughs> you guys sat around with your hoods on your heads. <laughs> it was nice. Well, you want to make sure it's not cutting off your circulation and you're choking to death oh, or God. getting headaches. Well, first know? we took it out of the box and uh, <laughs> I put hers on it first. I'm like, this is way too tight. <laughs> mine, mine was way too tight. <laughs> We might have been drinking. I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe a little. <laughs> might have had some beer. Oh, Jesus, God. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to you guys. So the hoods are the hoods fit fine, and we're safe to say. Yeah. All right. I, I think it, it's going to be all right. It's good. The, the hoods are in. They fit. Did you get your mosquito hats? Oh, yeah. They're in. <laughs> and how are, how are they? Cool? 
Well, yeah, you just throw them over your head, your hat. Yeah, but it's still <laughs> cool. I mean, hey, I'm living behind a screen. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. but So is everything arri- arrived now? Is that that you ordered? Have you got all the stuff? Um, as far as all of our extra dive gear we wanted, because so, we're taking pretty much two of everything a piece. Right. We don't backup. have to get into wet. <laughs> yeah, that too, no wet wet clothes every day um yeah we got all that it's more now just the personal items and you know to get together and stuff i'm sure will come up but right oh now your guys your guys' gear probably got to be about 50 pounds right well we get we each have two checked in bags for free up to 70 pounds a piece with the deal we got on the airline so and they're probably we're maxing that i was gonna say they're probably maxed yeah weight yeah. belts well this way we can take more stuff with us so we don't have to buy anything while we're there really or very limited limited <laughs> stuff right we're packing groceries well no 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 you're I mean, not running to walmart <laughs> snacks <laughs> cookies we'll see. we'll see oh cool well all good it's coming together now what about you dennis is all your shopping done for your trip yeah, pretty much two days in county and i pretty much got everything you know, set up, iBankers put together, make sure everything hooked up to everything. I got it all laid out in my yard. It looks like a huge mining operation outside right now. <laughs> um, Have you got a name for your high banker yet? Because I, I looked at it. It's a colossal. <laughs> Beast. Yeah, I'm going to call it the, the Swifty Whippy when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think I thought you want to catch gold though. If it's Swifty Whifty, it sounds like you'll be missing it. Oh, no, like, you're right. I better give it another name. Yeah, it sounds like uh, it'll be serving beers. <laughs> right. I'm gonna call it the Schlepping Schlepp, beer, Scott. That what it is? <laughs> yeah, slipping it, slipping it. <laughs> so you sitting around with your dive hood on, Dennis, or your mask or anything? No, actually. Um, well, yeah, we're we're, we're gonna. We're taking the, the or Dave's gonna got something. He took off his dredge. We're gonna take the pump, or we can still, like, if we want to just go dive down in the creek, maybe do some crevicing. Uh huh. Um, you know, of course, we're not allowed to run, you know, dredges in the water, but we've got the dry land nozzles. We've got, I mean, we're basically we're gonna be dredging, you know, we're dredging the hype, the, the the gravel bars. Okay. Um, you know the and and when you. When you're there, if you get your dredge permits, you can dredge in the creeks, but you're not allowed to touch the gravel bars with your floating dredge. So it's six one way, half a dozen the other. Yeah, you know, keep you know, there's good gold on the inside bends. There's good gold in that area. Period. So, well, that's where. Uh, and and there's a twelve inch rock rule. <laughs> Jesus, that's why there's good gold there because all the nightmares they put. Yeah, you that's guys for through. the that's for the floating dredge. What the twelve inch rock rule? Well, yeah. yeah. That's what well that's what Scott says. It's for floating dredges, you can't move a twelve inch rock. Yeah, like if it's a little bit exposed, oh, they don't they will not let you move crazy. it. Crazy. It's crazy. Just they just don't want you doing nothing is the whole well, thing. Well you can you can you can you know, suck around the rock. I mean if it naturally rolls itself, but you're not allowed to touch it or whatever according to Scott, so Right. Yeah. That's pretty much the way we look at it. <laughs> right. You can't be like winching boulders and stuff like that there. Oh hell no, buddy! Not you see in that river. And you're you're getting out of the water quick. Right, not in that river, right? No. But there's other rivers in Idaho you can. Right, Rich? Yeah, it, you know it's yeah. funny because the, the ones I keep hearing about, like the sand, all these all these rivers that's got good gold in it, they're protected. Every one of them. Oh yeah. I'm like really. That's why they're protected because they got good gold in. They don't want nobody in them. I mean, you know that. That's, it's a conspiracy. Uh, government it conspiracy. It is. It, <laughs> you know it. We all know it. It's what it is. It's just like the parks with all the gold in it. They don't want you in there and get no gold, so yeah. they don't allow it. If, it. if it's got, like Arizona, if it's got gold, it's BLM land. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See? Government conspiracy. That's exactly what it is. So, Dan, you're going to be down for two weeks also, right? Like Shad and Kathleen's going to be gone for two weeks. You're going to be gone for two weeks, too? Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks, and then I still have another week 
when I get back, or a little over a week when I get back. So, uh -huh. okay. unload the equipment here, load up the dredge, and I'll be gone for a week dredging. Where to? So you get a month off? Pretty much, yeah. Well, where are you going when you get back for a week? Uh, I'm going to go to, I'm not telling. Ancient Chinese secret? <laughs> Right? <laughs> Ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> okay. I, well, I like what was that, that one you, who said that? The No Tellum Creek or something That's like right. that? That's right. No Tellum Creek. And I forget the other name of it. It's got plenty of names for that place. It's pretty popular. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm going to go to Pirate's Cove. How are you I'll going to the cove? I'm going to, well, everything's called Pirate's Cove. I'm going to Pirate's Cove. That's right. And poor Rich ain't get to go nowhere. Cause he's, Not right now, no. Yeah, he's got to invest in a new air conditioner for the house. Scott's there. I ain't going nowhere. Dang. But we're living the dream through all you guys, through Kathleen, Shad, and Dennis, and Scott, apparently, Rich. Right? Yeah, I'm excited <clears throat> just to be off work for three weeks. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I mean, can you even wash a car yet? Him. Who me? Yeah, I drive yeah. it through the car wash like every two days. <laughs> uh, but you can't give it the hand detailed. Not the way I'd like to. No. Oh, I got to take the sling off, but it's still I can't lift my arm up. So I still would just have to use just the left arm. So it's not as thorough. So you know what I mean. <laughs> but I get to run it through the car wash every day or every other day or three times a day if I want because. I just bought one of them passes that cost me $30 a month, and I could drive it through any time I want. Unlimited? Unlimited. Hey, that's what that's what my girlfriend's got. She'll drive that thing twice a week. Through there. Oh, I drive mine happened. through. I'm like, if it, like, if it rained tonight even a little bit, it's going back through tomorrow. Get some bird crap on it, it's going back through tomorrow. <laughs> I don't care. Hey, that's the best $30 I ever spent. <laughs> Unlimited. Run it through twice when you do it. Oh, buddy, I run it. He's I run got, through. Concert. He's got bird poop insurance. Our car needs wash. Is, is can we use your ticket? Yeah. Is there a <laughs> limit? No, there's no limit. The day you can run nope, it through. Nope. Nope. No limit. I can go through it. I can just keep going back around circles if I really wanted to. <laughs> huh. It's cool. It, it's well worth it because just to run it through one time, it, it's thirteen bucks. And Jeez. I definitely wash my car more than three times a month, so I was like, oh, heck yeah, that's a bargain. But it, it's a sticker that goes on the inside of your windshield, and when you pull up to the gate, this infrared thing scans it, and boom, the gate opens, oh, and you wow. just pull on in, and it knows. Now, you just stick it on another car? And they, it they put it on your car when you pay for it. You telling me it's permanently affixed you can't take it off no it's off a super off. sticker you would destroy it taking it off trust me i already thought about it you know putting it on probably a piece. like some license plate yeah kind of like that and it comes out in pieces yeah kind of like that <laughs> take a picture of it and then hold it Ooh. <laughs> hey no that's a good idea kathleen i didn't think of that <laughs> that might work <laughs> you never know I'm like, with Dennis. I I'm, don't think I think if you, when you take it apart, it's going to be like all oh, come off in pieces, just well, like you right, said. Right, but like Kathleen said, take a picture of it. It'd be like Mission Impossible. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> dun. <laughs> I, it sounds really high tech. It does. It's cool, and I it's like sweet. So I watched yeah, you, you got that. You got that. You're doing that. You you probably won't go back to washing your car. Or maybe clean the detail on the inside out, but. Right. You know, if it's if it's doing that good of a job, just think of the money you're saving on water and oh, everything else. Oh, it does else, a good job you know? and time wise, you know. Just, All thing you got to do now is just wax it or what? You know. Yeah, wax it. Pull the inside. Yeah. And the, oh, right. oh no, Diz. He could he could pay an extra five bucks and get that spray on wax done. Yeah, well, it <laughs> it does do a little wax, but it ain't quite the wax I can do for it. So yeah, it's probably like, not the shine to do. No, it by it's hand. not enough shine for me. So it's like, hey, but it's worth thirty bucks. Just have fun going through the car wash. It's like, hey, car got some dirt on it. Guess I should run through the car wash today. Do, 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 do. And away I go. <laughs> it's right down the street. <laughs> Takes me four minutes to get there, maybe. So, right. I do not mind. Best $30 I ever spent in my life. Well, I, I can tell you this much. It's a good thing uh, for next Wednesday, Scott, 
so you're probably going to have to have somebody uh, dial your phone for you because you're probably going to have two broke arms. From next what? Time, next <laughs> from what? From what? Digging? No, not from digging. Moving rocks? No, not from moving rocks. Uh, He's just going to have two broke arms. Does he owe a mobster money? or? We know. <laughs> Usually they go for the kneecaps for that, but, you know, for oh, money. Oh, uh, huh. Don't know. Scott, you have to have somebody dial the phone or butt dial us. Yeah. Oh, I'll dial I can, I can use my nose. <laughs> there you go. Oh, wait. We call you anyway. That's right. So you'll have, you'll have to have Dennis up there with you then next Wednesday. Wherever yeah, he's getting this. He has to come. In, he has to come in town to be on the show. That's for sure. Yeah, wherever you guys. Because get he your, ain't getting no reception where he's going to be camping. That is for sure. That's what I mean. Wherever you, know you guys what? get your. Internet. I don't. I don't want reception where I'm at. I just want to plug and play, man. I want to get there and from the minute it's daylight till it gets dark. Ah, I see. It's pretty cool country. That's for sure. Oh, and by the way, Dennis, if you got a pistol, bring it. Oh, I, I, I am. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, it's open carry. It's open carry here. It don't matter where you're from. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Speaking of pistols, Chad. <laughs> 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 I'm thinking I this weekend. It. Weekend, I, I will. It. Um, this weekend? Yeah. Sorry, I've just been too focused. No, on I know. On I know. Yeah. Late time for Chad. Yeah, I know. I know, but you gotta get out there and. He's doing a great job on that pond. I bet. So uh, I guess I missed out on this. What's going on, Chad? What's what's that? About a pistol or something? Oh or? well, no. I just have yet to break in the Glock uh, 20, the 10 oh. millimeter we're what? taking. Yeah. That's it. I just haven't even had time to take it out shooting. I gotta learn how to shoot shoot a bear if That's I see right. One. You know, a buddy of mine's got one of those, um, and he was just showing me a couple nights ago uh, one of those one of the Glocks, the nine. And he got a 50-round drum for that thing. That is cool as heck. 50-round drum? Yes. <laughs> be, a little, <laughs> be a little hard to carry that. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not that big. It's not It's not huge like you think it would be. Uh -huh. it, and it fits several different models of uh, the Glock makes of the 9 or whatever. Dang. Can you imagine yeah. showing that gun? Somebody's like, well, I'm not scared. You put that clip in, they go, okay, never mind. 50 <laughs> rounds. A... Until it jams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure some states it's probably illegal to have that. Yeah, but... probably. You imagine how hot that sucker would be? After it would be, yeah. Yeah, it'd be red be hot. <laughs> yeah, but you know, after after about 15 rounds, you wouldn't have to stop and reload or put it, you know what I mean, click one out and throw another, another uh, no. one in. Uh uh no. Well, if we're talking about guns, um, the it's not really meant to go if you're using the Glock as a handgun. They have uh, the carbine conversion kits with Glocks. Uh huh. Uh, so it's kind of like a you know a, a shorter rifle type deal. That's when okay, that would make sense because you're a lot more stable. Okay. That he that's what it, that's what he has. He he actually had it for the it breaks down in half. He throw it in the backpack, but it also fits the nine millimeter, and he he, he got on has a video on it shows all the different oh. ones it fits. That's cool. What about yeah. the shed? What about the five hundred magnum? What about that? <laughs> <laughs> One, I think it would break Kathleen's wrist. Okay, Roger. Uh, <laughs> I have weak wrist, remember? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, you got that bad arm now. That yeah. wouldn't be good. Yeah. Hmm. I uh, the. It's it's cool cool revolver. Don't get me wrong. I uh -huh. you know it's I if you got a lot of money to blow, go get it. Have fun, especially the snub nose one. It'll be a blast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say. <laughs> but I don't know. It's economically, it's not really worth it. It's not practical. In my opinion. I'd rather go with the Smith and Wesson 460V. Uh huh. Uh, because there you can interchange out uh, multiple calibers from the 460. Uh, 454 Casul, oh. uh, even down to 45 long cold, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that'd be cool. So you yeah, it comes with three, yeah, it comes with three cylinders. Oh, That's that cool would gun. be awesome. I haven't seen that one yet. That yeah, it's it'll set you back about eleven, twelve hundred dollars. Oh, yeah, man, that's a lot of 
De Niro right there. Holy cow. I was That's gonna say expensive. I was looking at one that had a 357, 44 mag, and in something a little bit bigger than a 44 mag that I can't remember what it was, but it come with three cylinders, but he's he's in the same price range. <laughs> wow. Well here here's Scott, the four sixty uh Smith and Wesson. That's all one cylinder. You can put any of those rounds in there. Right. They're all the same diameter. They're just bigger, longer shells. Right. Is all. <clears throat> oh, that's oh, cool. Okay, you I got you. You need to change out the cylinders if you wanted to play roulette on, is it going to break my wrist or not? Wow. That would be crazy. <laughs> that would be a cool one to have, though, but not for that price. Good God, that's expensive. Woo. Mercy. Man, but it would be fun to have. Oh, it'd be a blast. Yeah, there's so much I would love to buy if I, I had the money to. It's probably expensive to shoot it, too. What's a box of that ammo cost? I, I oh, know. the well, 45 long colts are about, what, $16, $18 for a box of 50. That's yeah, not bad. Okay. 454 Casul, you're probably looking $30 or so. The 460B, you're probably closing in on $50 a box. <laughs> Your, well, your forty-five long colts, Dang. you can get you can get reloads for that pretty cheap, like exactly. twenty. Yeah, probably. That, yeah. See, when you get into those bigger calibers, you might as well invest on reloading and learn how to do it because it's, it'll save you a ton of money. Sure, especially yeah. if you're having a revolver. I mean, it's not like you're packing right under rounds of ammo with you for God's sake. Right. Worst case, a bear comes, you miss, save one, blow your own head off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or sh or shoot your buddy and leave him and you exactly. take off. <laughs> shoot him in the D so you can get away. Cause they like live meat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> That's not ah. funny. <laughs> What's that old term? I don't have to run fast, just faster, just faster than you. Faster than the other guy. <laughs> That's right. Mercy. I didn't realize they were that expensive. So that 500 Magnum is probably about a grand too, then, right? Oh, the, yeah, well, it, it depends. Like, you can get a barrel on that. I forget. I know they have a seven and a half, but I think there's even a longer one. It, it's hilarious to look at for the long barrel. I mean, granted, those are really good for hunting, right. honestly, because they, they have little bipods you can mount on it, a heck of a good scope, you know. But it's funny because they actually have a sling attached to the to the revolver. Right. The sling, like a rifle. Jeez. Because uh, it's so big, I I'm a fan of the little you know short barrel snubby. <laughs> yeah, <'cause> I, <laughs> if I had one, it'd be awesome. But here here's what's funny. Watch uh, I think the Expendables, the one with the Mel Gibson's the bad guy. It's hilarious because he carries a Smith and Wesson 500 short barreled, of course, a little snubby, uh -huh. and he's just flipping around <laughs> shooting it like it's no big deal. <laughs> that cracks me watching that. All right, which, All right. do you know which one? It, Two or three? I think it's the second one. Second one? Remember. I'm going to have to watch it again it. now. I've seen They it. do that because it's script. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, 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 it's yeah. The white <laughs> loads is what it is. That's cool, though. Interesting. But you got to get out and shoot that 10. For Kathleen's got to try it out. She's got to Oh, yeah. I, I know she'll do fine. I mean. Yeah. She'll, she'll be able to handle it because, I mean, oh, gotcha. I've, I've broke her in shooting some you know 45s i think we did a 44 magnum oh she's fine so she'll be able to handle yeah, it yeah she's fine I got I, one time you when i this. took her to an outdoor range i literally just kept she would shoot one i'd hand her another one i kept <laughs> stepping up the ant you know the caliber but she wasn't even realizing right it. well that's a good way to do it that way yeah. she wasn't scared or even thinking about it she just kept I, on rocking. i was gonna say i I think if it comes to her, when if she's face to face with a bear, she's got to pull that gun. I think the adrenaline's going to take over, and she'll be flipping around just like the movie. <laughs> well, yeah, who's going to be? Oh yeah, yeah, Probably. oh definitely. I mean, you, you'd be surprised when that adrenaline's pumping. You could be squeezing the trigger and not even paying attention where you're pointing. To be honest, right? You're staring right at the threat. Um, so you reason the other reason we went to the Glock ten or Glock twenty with the ten millimeter to have, you know. I think six, 17 rounds in a clip. That's so. nice, yeah. Yeah. So you still going to take a, take like a secondary one? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'll probably, I've, I've been debating what to take. out. Just because we'll be out there, I'll probably take my 357. Right, I would. But yeah. really, I wouldn't want to try to use that on a bear. You'll probably just tick them off. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> like like uh, Dar said, I'll have to just get some really heavy loads for right. that. Right, that's what I would do. But I'll, I'll take one just. Well, because, right, because one is whoever's tending, I mean, because, like, who's going to be carrying it? You, Kathleen, or, you know, both can't carry one 
10 millimeter at the same time. So uh, she won't be carrying. She's not used to carrying around a gun. Okay, no. I got I'll you. just be with her. It doesn't go with my outfit. Uh, right, no. right. It's. <laughs> I think you look cool, Kathleen. It's a cool well, it is. It's always cool when girls carry guns. Heck yeah. I'm okay. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you could. You could roll with it. You could accessorize. I don't know, Chad. If you're going to have enough you know, weight to carry all these guns, is it going to be heavy? Well, we'll just have to throw out a few boots of yours. Son will have to go. <laughs> no, we gotta, we got to save room for the gold that we're going to be taking back. <laughs> well, no, then when you no, bring... those carry on, are you kidding me? Yeah, or when no, you bring gold like back. <laughs> they're going to see a big chunk of metal. <laughs> or you <laughs> could leave tired. stuff then. If you get a lot of gold, I mean, you can make a lot of sacrifices of things you could leave. We'll buy oh, new yeah. boots Start when we get home. Oh, yeah. They, won't, they won't take your gold, will they? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I'd just melt it down into bars and put it in my pocket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? There you go. Yeah, I think, well, I know Ray said he carried his in his pocket on the plane. Well, yeah. I uh, one of the guys going with us uh, in the group uh, last year, he when he came back on the flight, he took his gold on carry-on, and they took it out and looked at it and started to open it. He was like, no, no, don't do that. It's gold. <laughs> <laughs> Because he took a carry on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, see, I don't want to deal with that. No, I wouldn't want to deal with that either. But I, I could just, you know, put. Oh, I don't know. No, if it's a <laughs> decent amount, I'm, I'm taking it with me. I'm not putting in check baggage. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see it in Paris. Right, because if it's in check bag, it's in a vial. When they X-ray it, they're gonna see that vial with something in it. They're gonna pull it out, and blah blah. blah you know the drill. So. Yeah, I guess. That's the only bad thing about that. <clears throat> you know, I think I'd rather go through, put it in my pocket. When you get to the security, toss it in the basket. We're going to have on. a big jar of it, so. Toss that <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a thermos, <laughs> like, like, oh, uh, that's Parker. Right. Yeah, we're going park or be like, sir, you can't take any liquid. No problem, it's gold. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. My name is Shad Snobble. Because <laughs> you guys got to uh, Dennis or Scott, what animals are at running around there in Idaho where you're yeah. going to be mine? Uh, uh, well, I know of one right now. It's called a Dinkleberry. <laughs> <laughs> Is this true, Scott? There's Dinkleberries down there? <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, one. Yeah, there's some bears. <laughs> so. What kind of weapon you carrying down there, Scott? Forty-five mag, you four and a half inch quick draw. You got your forty-five, and Dennis. What are you bringing? A nine? No, I I got a forty-four magnum. I got rid of the old forty-five. Oh, forty-four. Nice. Yeah, I'm bringing my American Ruger nine millimeter. Are you bringing your nine? Yeah. Okay. So you guys will be fine, but if you got you got bears down there too, right? Yeah. You got what? You got bears. Black bears. Oh, I don't know about bears. I don't know. Yeah, there's bears here. <laughs> <laughs> there's also wolves. Doggy. Which, oh, they're which, just doggies and teddy bears. Uh, well, the, what's cool is the wolves has got a seven hundred fifty dollar bounty on their heads. I'd be oh, wow. out. I'd be out gathering them to screw the gold. I'd be out there. No, they didn't <laughs> make some bank there. I'm telling oh, you. Oh no! I gotta have a permit to shoot the wolf. You probably do, but it's probably easier to get a wolf permit than a damn dredging permit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You could probably get a wolf permit at the hardware store. It's like, dang! <laughs> it's like, what's wrong with that state? They need to stop. That's what they need to do. They need to just make it like here easy <laughs> just going out there and find all the gold you want and have fun yeah, oh uh wyoming metal detecting adventure says there's and rick kudo said cougars are there cougars yeah there's yeah they're, they're they're here too they're nasty yeah is there a bounty well, i got on those? those in arizona so yeah so you're used to them but then Snake. snakes you know what i probably too cold I was going to say, I haven't seen any, but some people say that there's a uh, a snake that's up here. It's it's crossed between a rattler and a bull snake. Or I'm like, I know bull snakes eat rattlers, but but they call it something. And they, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they 
said, yeah, that they've found a couple of them, or the, the fisheries department's found a couple of them, that they've, a bull snake and a rattler has been mixed, and it's a venomous snake with no rattle, more or less. Uh, I'm sure I there's just, rattles. Oh, it's a, a buttle. Yeah, that's a buttle. <laughs> 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 I'm I sure. Don't know. I just like I said, I haven't seen any snakes. So. I'm sure there's rattlers down there. There has to be, right? Now, when it comes to deer and elk, oh my God! And antelope. You, you could there's there's deer like you're, I'm looking at three deer out in the field right in front of me right now. Dang. And the elk will be the elk will be here later. Dang. <sighs> it's awesome country up here, guys. It's it's pretty awesome country, but it's boy, you were you're way out in the middle of. This is here at the end of the road here. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. I'm excited just to see the sun at, you know. That is going to be the night. cool part. Yeah, at 11 o'clock at night, see the sun still shining, and you're still doing man, if you, your thing. If you guys can, man, get a video of the Royal Borealis. I want to see that. You can see it from there. I don't think you can see him as well at that time of the year. Yeah. Because it's not dark. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just the wrong Oh, I did pick up a new later. Later. Oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> Wait, Dennis said he picked up a new toy? Yes. What'd you I get? Just, I'm like, hmm. I, I just, well, let them finish. I just wanted to throw that in. Oh. You well, guys can finish talking you about You threw that. it in, You man. did. <laughs> you, you threw it, it in. And yeah, you There's no it. throwing it in and being then, quiet. And then backing out, right. When you throw it in. No, you... just because I, I forgot and then I remembered, I just want to throw it out there and then you guys can go on and then when you're done, I'll... We too can go late. back to my new toy. Too well, late. it's already thrown out yeah, there. Yeah, it's too late. You got to roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it cost me five dollars to register it. Five dollars to register it. Yeah. Did you get the a Phantom drone? 3, the Phantom Three standard? Is it a drone? Yeah. Oh goodness gracious! You got it. Sweet. You got a drone. What is now. it? <laughs> a Phantom Three standard. Shad, tell us what about is it. that. It's DJI Phantom Three standard. Yeah. Because I know Shad's a drone guy. Yeah, I, I had one of those. Oh. They're really good drones. Nice. Nice. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's, uh, you talk about easy flying, man. And then you had to pay $5 to register it? Yeah. Damn. With the FAA. Yeah. Oh, with FA? I got FA. You. Does it, it goes that high? Shad? Dude, it don't smoke at all, dude. It don't smoke? Oh. <laughs> No, I mean, does it go that high that you got to have a register with oh, the F? God, yeah. yeah, it's not about the height, Swifty. It's the weight of drones now and the size yeah. of them. Um, like mine, the little Mavic Air, I mean, it folds up. It's small, but the weight still, you have to get it registered now. Uh, the max height you can go is 400 feet, I believe. Oh, wow. Um, is wow. the limit, technically. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of roads now. Yeah, yeah. Den Dennis will get some great shops up up the Clearwater Creek because the guys they call it the Clearwater for a reason. Yeah. It is crystal clear. Oh, be cool. Do, now, does Idaho require a separate permit? Can you I have no idea about that. <laughs> oh yeah, I probably have to have a permit to fly my drone. You probably you know, have to have a special. A yeah, you probably have to have a special air permit. For You're that. gonna yeah. get you a big surprise when you get here. I'm telling you. Air permit, Dennis. You have to see if you can <laughs> register for one of them before you leave. Probably got to buy a permit to put on my car or travel through Idaho. <laughs> you and... might have to. Yeah, I hate when you have to go take a crap in the woods. And you need a permit. <laughs> you need a permit every time or just one time? You got to hang it on the tree or tuck no, it the line. You're, you're going you're gonna to need a permit to dig the hole. <laughs> you probably, you're right. <laughs> Who you, said I'm digging a hole? Unless you surface place it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just walk away. Landmines around my claim. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it is a mining claim. <laughs> All right. Uh, right. You guys are Where are you going to go to the bathroom, Dennis? Aren't you by the road? Yeah, yeah got, he's I, right. He's I've got, right. I've got, a, I've got a porta pot. That was one uh, of my other toys. You got a permit for that? <laughs> you got a permit. Yeah. Yeah, the closest place you can get one of them is Grangeville, which is 60 miles away. 60 mile for a crapper? To yep. get one I got a pork pot, bring your own bucket and lid. That's all I got to say if you want to use yep. it. There you go. Fancy, fancy. Look at you. Man, well, oh, man. It's, it's a shower slash porta pot. A shower porta pot? Yeah. Oh, one of the hang up deals. You hang up yeah. the, the, yeah, yeah, the roundabout skirt. 
Yeah. Okay, so you didn't rent a porta pot. It's just one of those camping tent things, right? Yeah. Oh, I thought you rented a porta pot from the porta pot. Well, you people. know, I was actually waiting on somebody to find out some information because, well, nothing's been going on. No panning, no porta pots, no nothing. <laughs> Maybe selling I some beer to people. I just, or uh, didn't I just cover this? You just I said think it. I did. Yeah, you 60 miles away, 60 Grangeville, miles away. Port-a-Pot. Yeah, I think I did cover that. You did. You oh, said it was yeah, 60 I miles just away. Just <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, I, yes, you did say that. You covered the porta pot issue. So you got a shower curtain, porta potty shower thingy. Is it a solar shower, Dennis? One of them things. It's a, well, yeah, you got the, the the bags you put up, you fill up with water and you set them out, and there's a place to hang it on the inside. And, uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's it's basically like a one one person, you know, you go in and you can shower and, right. you know, you put the mat down, and then, of course, it's just kind of a little hide of thing, you know, you just get your five-gallon bucket, and if you got to go potty, you go potty, and then you put a lid on it, and you're done. Oh, right. So, is it all in one area? You, you poop and shower at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> that. well, that's surprised. probably what I'll be doing. <laughs> it'd be like a, it'd be like a natural bidet. Uh, yeah, I guess it would be. <coughs> oh, mercy, mercy. Uh, you make sure you take plenty of video while you're down there, except for of that. Hey, but, <clears throat> but I'm gonna ask you guys. Yes, sir. And maybe anybody that's in, and I haven't looked yet. One of the other things that I have to get <clears throat> that's in the chat room. <clears throat> I've got my rock crusher. Uh huh. And I've got, I've got a ry- Ryobi. You know the the side that that runs the the crusher. Yes, but I don't have a battery for it. I wonder, like, if Lowe's or Menards or who carries Ryobi. Lowe's. Lowe's it's, does. Yeah. Yeah. Home Depot's the best Home one. Depot's uh, Ryobi. Oh, it's Home Depot. You're right. Yeah. yeah my bad. Home Depot. Yeah, because I got I got three of those batteries that run my radio. But how you go? Oh, you, I, you're going to use I, that I, cordless angle grinder to run that crusher. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, we're also. Um, we got invited with Dave, got my hard hat and everything else to go up and uh, we can go work his hard rock mine. So, you know, oh, I, I've never fun. done it. And I want, that's kind of one of the things on my bucket list. So we'll probably take, uh, you know, a day or two. and That would be and fun. Yeah. Hard rock mining. and Yeah, that would be fun. <clears throat> that would that would be a lot of fun. Take your pinpointer up but, there. You know, I mean, sampling some of, the, some of the stuff on my claim, you know, I've, I've got the rock crusher where we can break it up into little pieces and crush it and see if there's any gold in it. Yeah, Don't right. you need a permit for that, though? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure yeah, you do. Yeah, I'd say something, but i got to be nice. It's a family <laughs> show. That's, That's right. right. Have fun with it. Oh, yeah, we got to have fun with rock, it. rock, right? It's what? What, Rich? <laughs> Rich, what did you say? Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't pick up a twelve-inch rock and, and break it in half. Oh I yeah, you can't pick. run a twelve-inch rock in the crusher. It has to be a pebble. This would be, and you better have a pebble permit too. Went through the rock crusher, ain't it? Twelve-inch rock. <laughs> oh Jesus God, this is it's just too so much. Would, in all seriousness, though, would the cordless angle grinder I don't be strong enough though I to power know. a rock crusher? And for how long? I don't know, because it recommends a 14-amp grinder for them things. Mm-hmm. You know? And it plays, it's rough on them. Right. This is a hand, This is one of the rock crushers I picked up, you know, the, the little small handheld. Yeah. I don't know. You can huh. try well, it and Dennis, see. When you, when you go get those batteries, make sure you get the thick ones. Don't get those thin ones. Why is a, different? The, so can I, can the, I use a thick one without a permit? I don't well, know. the thicker batteries is going to keep those charge very, you know, a little bit longer. And, and yeah, I'm picking up your sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that on here tonight. Ain't there, Scott? <laughs> yeah. Fire it back. <laughs> Hang in there. Hang Fire in there. it back. Sarcasm. Ain't it cool? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Everything will be fine in a couple of days when Dennis gets down there with his permits. It'll all be good. He'll, everybody will see. It's all good. Yeah. In the meantime, oh, let's take a look at some that's precious right. metal prices. Roll that beautiful yeah. bean footage, Shad. All right. Well, obviously, it's a great day for the precious metals. Uh, gold climbed $23. <laughs> and it's at $1,419. Dang, did it. Uh, silver. Oh, nice. Silver's up sixteen cents at fifteen dollars and twenty-five cents. There you go. Platinum's up sixteen dollars at eight hundred and twenty-seven. Uh 
Palladium, the big mover, is up $45 to 1588 And last, Rhodium is up $40 to 3410 Booyah. Yeah. I wish gold was. I wish gold would get about fifteen and hang around there for a couple of years. You know, it's working on it. It's moving up again. So, <laughs> I mean, that's a sweet jump today. You know, or whatever it was. That's that's nice. Real nice, Shad. Thank you. What about some yep. birthdays? Oh, there's some birthdays. Oh, wait, today. we have Mr. Golden Voice back. Are you singing today, Denny? I'm always singing. All right, hold on one second. Let me cue up your music here. You have to find that music. There, because you haven't been here in three weeks. I haven't, we ain't had nobody singing. Well, uh, hang on a second now. Right. Let me, uh, I was going to say, that's why I haven't been able to tell him anything. He ain't been clear, here for three weeks. Clear the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> say hang when, on a second here. Say when you're ready. Almost ready. Uh, Don't turn on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to see. If, I'm trying to get this ready here. See if this. What is it? Um, new lyrics. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Say, say you ready, Dan? <coughs> yeah, I'm ready. All right, take it away, buddy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday <laughs> to <laughs> you. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Day oh, to it's you. oh my god. No, not that. Happy we don't need to. Oh my god. To you. Oh, Mother dear. of God. <laughs> Be glad we're not on video. God, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Well, it is July 10th, 2019. And we have Andy, Kimbro, Barry Sullivan, Bobby, Chris, Chrisana T. Brown, Cliff, Darwin, Tomlinson, David, Donna Fox, Justin, Larry Timmons, Marvin, Mike, Richard E. Bussell, Tim E. Fitzsimmons, Tyler Norton. Hang on, I gotta scroll down. And okay. tomorrow we have Chris Musgrove, Corey Kyle Reynolds. DJ, Elizabeth <laughs> Richardson, and Gordon Burgess. Happy birthday. Well, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy and day. I like somebody. I am going with Tim E. Fitzsimmons. Okay. One, I like that name. Two, he lives, he's from Lewiston, Idaho. So I'm okay. keeping with the theme of Dennis's trip and Scotty out there in Idaho. Yeah. Um, he's been a member of the site since 2011. Uh, he enjoys panning, sluicing, and planning on metal detecting. I wonder if he's done that since he signed up. Um, he belongs to the GPAA, and he found Gold Prospector Space by, well, exploring the web. No one referred him. Best way. He found it on his own. Best way. So thanks for being a member, and hope you have a wonderful birthday. Heck yeah, he probably needs a permit to metal detect, too, down there. <laughs> Kathleen, do you got some news tonight or anything? I do. You do? Well, that's, yep. uh, how's this sound? We'll take a quick break from AMRA, and we come back with some Kathleen stretching up the news. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. That's we'll be right back, everybody, after we get this permit for this commercial. You got to get a permit for the news. Permit for <laughs> Do you like to mine for gold, enjoy prospecting a nice crack in the bedrock, enjoy getting outdoors to camp, fish, hunt, and hike on your public lands? You plan your trip, load the gear, grab the dog, put the family in the truck, and drive off to a locked gate. A sign says you cannot enter or access your own public lands. Mining claims and public land owned by we the people are being designated as off limits by our own government every single day. Are you concerned about the direction our government 
government is going? Are you tired of seeing no access, no entry signs on your lands? We are, and we are fighting back. We are AMRA, America Mining Rights Association, the fastest growing small mining advocacy association in America. AMRA is a 501c3 not-for-profit formed by miners, hunters, off-roaders, retired military men, and women to stop the insanity. AMRA was formed to educate, unite, and help the small miners and public land users on their rights, rights given to us by God. Do you want access to great mining claims? For a small tax deductible donation to their miners legal fund, your family gains access to proven excellent mining claims across America for an entire year. AMRA challenges the USFS, BLM, EPA, and the other agencies intent upon stopping you from enjoying your own lands. You are who pays these people's wages. It is time they listen to us. We need to unite. And that is what AMRA is doing. As you sit here right now, thousands of acres of public lands are being closed, locked, and blocked from use by you. Are you fed up yet? Join us. Get in on this fight and let's restore America to what our families fought and died for. Freedom. Just visit AmericanMiningRights.com. AmericanMiningRights.com. Also, check us out on Facebook at American Mining Rights Association. AmericanMiningRights.com. It is time for Dredging Up the News with Kathleen Biffle. Mining news from around the globe. Metal detecting, dredging, entertainment news, and fun facts as well. Here's Kathleen. Brought to you by the State of Idaho Permit Board. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. July 10th. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Okay. Um, Now, this is kind of a follow-up of a story that I did earlier this year. In Oregon, uh, Matthew Proudfoot, who testified for the government against his father, Harry Dean Proudfoot III, was sentenced Monday to two years in federal prison for misleading investors to spend their money to their company in support of a fraudulent gold mining operation. Oh, geez. Uh, They scammed more than 100 investors out of $3.9 million. The father, Harry who is 79, was sentenced in April to seven years in prison after he was convicted in, uh, at the trial. The oh. father and son solicited all these investors, <laughs> investors to send their money in to uh, invest in a mining operation in Ohio, what? of all places. <laughs> no. They falsely told investors from across the country that their money would be used to buy mining equipment and conduct mining operations at two gravel pits in Ohio. What? But instead, they diverted the money to pay personal living expenses, and some of the money went to pay for Matthew's personal bankruptcy, and also a $26,000 neck surgery and his monthly living expenses. Holy cow. Yeah. Wow. They, uh, they you know, basically misled the investors, saying that, you know, the company was their mining company was financially responsible right. and blah blah blah. Um, well, their first hint should have been Ohio. I mean, Ohio, right? <laughs> maybe maybe they heard us raving. About oh, maybe, Ohio. yeah, maybe. Mm, could, In the pit, that could be. <laughs> they got it. Yeah, they got on the bandwagon. <laughs> yeah, wow. I know. Um, they only ended up like. They they kept saying, telling investors, you know, oh, we're financially stable and uh, we're businessmen and we're going to get ge- geologists on board. Uh-huh. But in, real- in reality, they employed an amateur hobby geologist oh my God. and did not have business or property lease agreements in place. And they only purchased one piece of mining equipment. Oh, geez. What did they get? Any clue? They didn't say what they got. Oh, wow. <laughs> But they did add a, a little bit of this to the story. Um, you know, Matthew was a very successful businessman uh-huh. in the software industry before he went into doing this. I mean, he lived comfortably in a large home, had nice cars. And then once he did this, of course, now he lost everything. And his family lives in a three-bedroom apartment in Idaho and is financially devastated. Wow, geez, a week. 
Hmm. Oh, he owes a judgment with the Secu- Securities Exchange Commission for $4 million. Holy cow. And wh- wh- why couldn't they work the ground again? Well, he scammed them. They, oh. it, it, it didn't exist. He lied about these gravel pits in Ohio. And people invested in the money, and they didn't do anything with it. Ah, I see. That's just nuts. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, um, also earlier this year, uh, I report, here's another follow-up to the story. I reported uh, on the fatality at the Gold Bar Mine in Eureka County, Nevada. Uh Federal safety regulators uh, have confirmed the death of the 57-year-old Dean Pilcher is reported to be the result of natural causes. Oh, really? Yeah. He died from natural causes when the 50-ton... A uh, haul truck he was driving overturned right. at the open pit mm-hmm. uh, mine in, in their open mine pit. Therefore, the agency determined that the fatality will not be charged to the mining industry. Okay. But they didn't provide any details of why the truck crashed. Wow. I remember that one. Yep. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, I've got w- only one global news story. Okay. Uh, it's in the Philippines. Okay. okay. Australia's o- Oceana Gold Corporation said last Thursday that it had, they're stopping their trucking at their. <laughs> <laughs> I go for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Diddy Pio? <laughs> <laughs> the Diddy P.O. Gold and Copper Mine? <laughs> Close to no. Diddy P.O. <laughs> P. Diddy. Oh, my gosh. That sounds something like a word Dennis would make up. <laughs> yeah. P. P. I'm going to Diddy P.O. <laughs> anyway, they, they're in a dispute uh, with the provincial government there um, over their license to operate on the site. This uh-huh. uh, mining company is waiting for the renewal of its operating license for the mine on Zan Island. Luzon Island, mm-hmm. but in the meantime, it has authorization from the Philippines Mines Bureau to continue operations. Oh. So we've got you know, this kind of like their state and the federal thing going on over there. Wow, um, crazy. Yeah. Jeez. So anyway, Oceania Gold is pretty big. Yeah, yeah, I've heard yeah. of that one. They, um, they're in New- Australia, of course, New Zealand, and I guess they have mines in the United States as well. Mm-hmm. They produce 115,000 ounces of gold and 15,000 tons of copper last year. Right. Um, it's only a mid, they, they consider it a mid tier miner, so. <laughs> okay. It's just mid. Yeah, we're <laughs> mid tier. All right, I'm going to turn this over to Shad. Oh, He's going to do local oh. events of interest. Okie dokie. Why, thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so quick look here in Gold Prospector Space. Uh, coming up on July 19th through the 21st is Gold Fest 2019, located in Kirkland, Indiana. Ooh. Click on the tab there, contact Thomas Pennyweight folks for more information. But camping will start on Friday the 19th, uh, as well as they'll be prospecting on two different creeks there, uh, one on Sugar Creek and Brown Wonder Creek. Uh, one creek's really good for floating dredges. The other, if you have high bankers, trommels, or stream sluices, as well as great panning areas. So areas to prospect for all. They're even having a metal detecting hunt um, with prizes from gold coins, uh, silver coins, copper coins. So lots of good stuff getting in on there to win and be a part of. So Sounds check fun. them out. If you t- yeah, and I'll tell you what, Sugar Creek is loaded, folks. <laughs> that sounds like a fun little event. No permit required there. Not. Good deal. <laughs> uh, also, we have none other than John's Place, oh, yeah. uh, which is July 20th uh, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And it's in West Branch, Michigan. You can contact the Michigan GPA for more information. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a private gravel pit situated on a glacial contact moraine high banking panning and rock hounding no fee cool so pretty cool there that'd be fun um and one other event to highlight on the site um also brought to you by the michigan gpa chapter uh the muskelonge lake state park on august 2nd through the 4th 
are having an outing there, um, which that's located 18 miles north of Newberry, Michigan, uh-huh. in the uh, Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Uh, they'll be camping. Uh, all prospecting gear must be self-contained, no gas-powered gear. Oh. So it sounds like you're kind of limited to stream sluices. Hand yeah. dredge. Hand dredge, <laughs> yeah. that type of stuff, or maybe even battery-powered sluices. Mm. So. Okay. But pretty cool check out there for more information, and you can add any event that you have and post them there on That's Gold right. Prospector Space, and we'll definitely give a shout-out as we get closer to those dates. Heck yeah, pretty cool. All right, moving on now to Salado, Texas, Salado, Salado Texas, Salado. on July 20th at the Salado Museum. <laughs> Uh, going on 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. It's the historic artifacts uncovered in Salado Creek by Cody Drake, also known as the Arizona Treasure Hunter. Um, as you may remember, we had him on as a guest on Prospectors Radio a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, but he'll be displaying everything he's uncovered in the area. Uh, it's, the event is free for the entire family, as well as there's a hit, special hidden treasure hunt for kids. Um, Oh, the event is for the entire family. It's not free. It's ten dollars for adults, five dollars for children. Damn. I'm sorry about that. Read okay. that wrong. That's all right. Um, so it, it, a lot of cool information going to be shared there. So uh, you know, Cody, besides a treasure hunter, he's a desert survivalist. He prospects for gold. He metal detects, and he's awaiting the publication of his book on southwestern treasure hunting and desert survival. Sounds so like pretty cool there in Texas. Yep. Uh, moving on now, uh, we have Gold Dust Days, July 26th through the 28th. Um, it's a heritage festival paying tribute to the rich Western heritage of Gold Bar, Washington. There'll be a Civil War encampment, live music, handcrafted only street fair, an amazing classic car show, and a parade. Plus, there'll be old fashioned, free fun for children, including a bike decorating <laughs> session, followed by a bike parade and bouncy house. There you go. <laughs> All right, moving on now to August 15, Dawson ah. City, Yukon. You read it right there, or you heard it right. Uh-huh. That's up in the Yukon. Uh, of course, if you watch Gold Rush on with Tony Beats, Parkle Schnabel, and all those crazies, uh-huh. uh, Dolphin City is pretty much the closest town to them. Oh, okay. Uh, but they'll have a special weekend of events celebrating Dawson City Gold Rush history, uh, hosted by the Klondike Visitors Association. So remember, in August of 1896, George Carmack, Dawson Charlie, and Skookum Jim <laughs> discovered gold in what is now called Bonanza Creek. Soon after came one of the world's greatest gold rush stampedes. Uh, today, Dawson City celebrates their rich and unique history with the fe- weekend festival known as Discovery Days. There will be crafts, face paintings, a sampling of the Diamond Tooth Gerties, Can Can Dancer Show. Gertie. Gertie, sorry. <laughs> Gertie. <laughs> can Can Show. Can Can uh, Riding Competition walking tours, an arts festival, and, of course, a golf tournament. There's just barely enough hours in the day to see and do everything. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I've seen some Facebook pictures of, like, Parker Schnabel. They did a big barbecue and stuff in Dawson City, like, I think last week or this 4th oh, of July or something around there. 4th but... of July, yeah. So they'll probably be at that event then. Oh, yeah. But again, that starts August 15th at 12 p.m. and runs through August 19th at 5 p.m. All throughout the town of Dawson City. That's a win-win right that's, there. That's only four hours away from Chicken, Alaska. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you'll be back. Well, we'll be home by then. Sorry. Oh, darn. In July or oh, August? August. Oh, dang yeah. it. Dang. That no can-can cool. can dancing for you. Can-can dancing. So, okay. You can like take it. the top of the world highway from Chicken, Alaska to the Yukon. Oh, you can? Yeah. Nice. Pretty cool. That is pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Shad. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do have a, a fun fact. Uh, not too long, but okay. uh, some of these, I they, they were really 
cool when I did them originally, so I'm bringing some of them back. Believe and, believe. and believe it or not, that this one has a story um, that I did November 25th, 2017. Oh, wow. Okay, it's been a while. I've been doing this for a little I while. Guess. <laughs> How long have we so been doing this? Somehow rerun. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start off. Um, I'm going to do the um, the strange tales from the Wild West. Okay. I only have two tonight. Okay. Um, I didn't bring the, all of them back, but all this right. is one I thought was kind Come of interesting. In. Uh, this, if not, did you guys know, if not for the Civil War, that the Wild West might have been populated by camel boys instead of cowboys? No, I didn't know. When Edward Fitzgerald Beale, he was a Texan war veteran, he saw how poorly the horses were doing in the desert of the Southwest, so he suggested importing camels. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it was in 1855 um, when he had this idea, and under the Secretary of War Jefferson Davis, two years later, um, they, the military imported 75 camels and formed a U.S. Army Camel Corps. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, one group was stationed in Texas and the other in California. Okay. I did not know that. I didn't either. Uh, but, you know, with the Civil War looming on the horizon, the government didn't want to pay for any more camels. Uh, also, the mule breeders in the area had a fit. <laughs> uh, yeah. So when the fighting broke out... Uh, Confederate forces captured the Texas herd and let most of the camels loose. So that's where it gets interesting, right? Okay. The camels uh, really were good, of course, of surviving in the desert. Sure. <laughs> uh, most cowboys out there had never seen a camel and didn't know really what it was when they turned them loose. Uh -huh. um, so the camels <laughs> roamed uh, Arizona, New Mexico until late 1890s, and of course there was a whole ton of strange tales um, that stemmed from that. One was called the Red Ghost. Settlers described it as a terrifying beast with some terrifying <laughs> rider strapped to its back. Oh, Jesus. According to the Smith uh, Smithsonian article, legend said the ghost took down a bear and could disappear in a thin air. Ooh. And when the, <laughs> and the, red, the red ghost was finally caught, it was not by a cowhand who tracked it through the desert, but it was caught by a rancher who shot him because he was in his tomato patch. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> they discovered that the red ghost was just a red wild camel. Oh, okay. <laughs> camels, are like, camels are like coffee, right? One lump or two? <laughs> um, I guess all of the camels were eventually captured or killed. The last camel from that pack um, was named Topsy, and it uh -huh. died in the Los Angeles Zoo in 1934. Oh, well. I'll be because honest. it fell over? Probably. It was Topsy heavy. <laughs> it was Topsy. <laughs> topsy <laughs> it's a retard. <laughs> it was a Topsy heavy one. <laughs> All right, and then this story, you guys have, um, I did this closer look in, in 20, 2017 on it, so I'm just going to give you a short version of it. Right. Um, this is always one that is a favorite of mine. It's the Bodhi Curse. Remember yes. that? Yes. Yes. Yes, um, The Bodhi State Historic Park, is, this is the town of Bodhi. It's a mining town on the border of California and Nevada, in Nevada and they found it in 1877 and abandoned it in the 1940s when um, mining in the region dried up. So the state of California did take it over, and they turned it into a park in 1962. Mm -hmm. So ever since then, <laughs> tourists have been stealing the artifacts when they visit. Right. Many of the artifacts uh, taken from the town are later, later returned. Rangers at the park regularly receive letters from people who claim to have stolen something only to have their luck turn bad. Uh, tourists who have taken historical items report that their luck went sharply downhill after the, all of the thefts that they did. Mm -hmm. uh, they attributed their, all their car accidents, unemployment, everything you name it, um, to this curse. Wow. <laughs> I remember this. Remember that? Yes, I remember this story. 
Yeah. Um, if you want to see hear the full version of this closer look, you can look in our archive. Mm -hmm. November twenty fifth, I think, twenty seventeen. Oh, you know. I did a, a an in depth uh, blurb on Bodie. So yeah, didn't you say sure. that? Don't even take a rock from there, right? No, you can't. Um, some lady even, I guess, returned a nail. Yeah. <laughs> That's bad. She ran over. A, a nail? Yeah. Yeah. That's she bad. Ran, uh, it got stuck in her tire, I guess. And she, she returned it. It gave her bad luck and returned it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not even, that's not right. I mean, you didn't even, you didn't steal a nail. It just got stuck in your tire. So, Still. you know, people would believe anything, anything, I guess. Rock, but it left dirt, her. whatever. Yeah. It, yeah, I know that feeling of having nails stuck in tires. It left yeah, her. I do yeah. too. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> we never returned them. <laughs> I think we all got to experience that at the same time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was coincidental. It must have been yeah. a curse of yeah. some Memorial sort. weekend is some, the anniversary. Some kind of weird <laughs> curse is probably what it was. Yeah? And that's what it was. Weird curse got us, guys. I think so. It's, I probably, think it's no. probably where somebody burned a bunch of pallets. <laughs> it was the curse of the Norris. That's what it was. Sure. Every time we go there, we're either um, flooded or... Whatever. Or something, yeah. Don't find gold. We have no luck <laughs> there. Mm -mm, not at all. Crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> the Bodie curse. That was dum, fun dum, facts. Dum. That was fun facts. Yay. I like it. I, I remember that story, though, because I thought it was really quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, Check it out in the archive. Yeah, it's, it's great. You narrowed it right down, too, to... November of 2017. That should be an easy one to find for anybody. That was a Thanksgiving episode. Yeah, it would have been, yes. Pretty cool. So if anybody wants to check that whole story out about the Bodhi curse, that's all they got to do. Dig into those archives. Either that or just go pick up a rock. <laughs> yeah, go to Bodhi. You can find the archives on speaker. You can find it on uh, Spotify. iHeartRadio. Uh, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all yeah. over everywhere yeah everywhere everywhere it's everywhere it's like the Bodhi curse we're everywhere yeah <laughs> hey, does anybody ever use those stupid metal straws i know what what kind of well in in some parts of the country california california uh, <laughs> it no longer give you straws anymore you so a lot they you know because it's bad it kills pollution it. yeah it kills because it kills somehow the united states contributes to like a percent of all the people in the world. I think it's all the straws coming from China. It's, it's Asia. <laughs> Asia is ruining it. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, you gotta be careful um, if you do use one. A, a woman just happened uh, drinking you know, with a metal drinking straw um, tripped and fell and, and oh. impaled herself through her eye and oh. died. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I thought I'd seen <laughs> something about that. No, this is true story. You can't make that yeah. stuff up, yeah. You can't make it up. No. It happened in England, though, which is kind of funny. <laughs> she was carrying a mason jar-style drinking glass with a screw-top lid in oh. her kitchen, tripped and fell, and a 10-inch stainless steel straw entered her left eye socket pierced her brain. See, if it had been a plastic oh, one, gosh. she'd have been fine. It would have bent, she would have smashed her face on the glass, and everything would have been fine. So now England has issued a safety alert warning that metal drinking straws should never be used with a lid that fixes them in place. Oh my God. And great care should be taken when using them. Oh, uh, they'll ban them next. Yeah, like not walking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know about anything, <laughs> but like, if I'm drinking out of a, with a straw... I, when I'm done, I like chewing on it. I can't chew on a metal can't straw. Can't chew on a metal one. Nope. And then I guess some places tried those paper straws. You yeah. know, that's horrible. How that Where work? Where I work, they have paper straws. Oh, really? They disintegrate. They disintegrate. You know that. You know that's got to get soggy after about ten minutes of drinking through it. Exactly. That's Whatever my you thing. Drink your drink. Yeah. yeah, no big gulps for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> you put that straw in, you better drink it immediately. Or yeah. Because that straw is just going to turn to now, mush. Can you take a metal straw on an airplane? Probably oh, not. Is it a dangerous weapon now is Probably. my question. Probably. Yep. They'll well, ban them, too. got to think about that. Hmm. They'll just ban them. Another thing, another <laughs> city will ban metal straws. So they're, they're making metal straws out of what? I, I, Aluminum or? I 
gas stainless tank. steel so i so don't know so they don't rust i guess so how are they making the steel are they is it environmental <laughs> sound or safe Probably it's not, not about that it's about the end product <laughs> to them <laughs> Just like they want to ban mining, but they uh, don't realize that for their fancy electronic electric cars, that the batteries require something that is mined from the earth. Uh -huh. Yeah, but mining's bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. It's it's video on parade here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, you went video and get it? I missed it. Yeah, both of them did. Dennis did oh. and Scott did. <laughs> Sorry, oh, I pay attention in the chat room. I know. Our, yeah, yeah, I guess know. they're not paying attention to our yeah, news. Yeah, they're, they're not. They're lolly gagging around video. over there. They're, they're sending each other love notes and stuff, holding them up to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you. I miss you, too. You guys are funny. <laughs> All I got to say is I want to hear play-by-plays when, Dennis, you get out there to Idaho. Me, too. That I want, I want all he's the well, wait, I, I Dennis, he's gonna love I want it. To see a reality show. I want to see the bad. Hold on, Dennis leaves Friday, gets there Saturday. So you gonna make it to the show Sunday, Dan? Uh, I hope so. Okay, Scott, you and Dennis, make sure you're, you're gonna there. try to do that. You're gonna try to get here in one day. Yeah, they are. There's three drivers. Driving straight through. Yeah, yeah three, Saturday. three drivers. Okay, that's wow. They're just it takes one day in in seven hours. So twenty four day and a half. Thirty hours. Technically a, what, a day and a third. Yeah. Something like that. Twenty eight hour drive. Twenty eight hours. Yeah, it's I was gonna say it's 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 pretty weird because it'll take you at least an hour just to get down the road to gets here. So yeah, it's that's gonna be a pretty good drive. Okay. So, Dennis and Scott, you guys be here Sunday, and we can get some info, what's going on, when, you know? Well, like I said, he's got he's got to come clear to Elk City, because so, that's the only place I get reception is here at the, the, the steakhouse and at the other place. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, you guys will have dinner. But I do. But I have I have thought about old Dennis Dayton. I actually found a, a couple of uh, earbuds that do doubles so he could have his own, you know, with he could hear him. He could hear and talk at the okay. same time on the same computer with me. So okay, let's get on a little earlier than Sunday, just so we could test that fact and make sure it works. <laughs> okay. Okay, Tim, we'll do that. I got you. I got you. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? Yeah. Definitely safe traveling, Dennis. Yeah, definitely. With your crew of three drivers. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that how he's doing? Yeah, I thought three. he was driving it all himself. Oh, no, there's three long day for you, buddy. Uh, there's three of us. I'm I'm gonna take the night shift, driving. Okay. We're I'll gonna... tell you, man. Once you get here in Idaho, man, watch out for deer. I mean, keep your eyes peeled. It's worse than Indiana and Ohio. I'm telling you, it's bad. Well, one one thing I I know. Uh, are you done, Kathleen? Because I don't want to be stepping over your segment. Oh yeah, yeah. we're we're done with the. She ended news. it. Okay. Um. One thing I'm looking forward to on the trip home, we're going to stop by, we're going to leave a little bit early, and we're going to stop by Mount Rushmore and Devil's Tower. Cool. Very nice. Play the what's, tour, do the What's Devil's style. Tower? You ever, you ever seen the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Yeah. Oh, the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't know that was what it was called. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Do the tourist thing, right? Check out yep. the scenery and the sights. That would be cool. Get a picture. Pick up some playing cards somewhere. Hopefully, I can find something that says has Mount Rushmore playing cards and a Devil's sure Tower playing cards. I'm sure you can. You know, should be pretty oh, yeah. easy. Pretty easy, Dennis. You know. Hey, you want to hear some cool news though? What's that? I for, I actually forgot to tell you guys about this. I just had uh, my friend in Canada, Ted Bellis. He got a hold of me. He's like, "Hey, where are you at?" Da, da, da. I told him where I'm at. I'm in Idaho, and you know, getting you know, wait for Dennis to cut show up. He's like, "Oh man, I was hoping you were kind of free right now." I'm like, "Why?" He says, "I wanted you to come to the Yukon, and evidently he's going to stay in the same cabin as the Hoffmans did when they were in the Yukon." Really? And this guy said he's going to go out and kind of pull some stuff off the top to let him dig, and just tell him, you know, he's going to keep the gold, of course, but he's going to tell him what he actually <laughs> he actually finds. And man, I, th I thought that would be cool. I told you, man, wait until next year if we could do that. It'd be awesome. That'd be cool. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like it'd be fun. I, I wouldn't mind going to the Yukon, no, checking that'd it be out. Fun. But yeah. I don't, I don't have a passport, so I gotta, you know, uh -oh. I'm gonna dish out 150 dollars for that dang thing. I don't have one either, Scott. 
Yeah. Dune hair. You don't need no stinking passport. <laughs> yeah, you do to go to Canada. <laughs> Just go for it. You'll be fine. Don't stop. Yeah. It's Canada, eh? <laughs> it's Canada, eh? <laughs> Sure you gotta have a permit though you probably do uh, just show them your permit yeah no, as you drive know. through yeah, scott show your, your water <laughs> permit <laughs> hey it's it's like i said it's it's rough up there too because they got the uh what what the hell what do they call the water guys up there the uh f something shoot what do they call them guys the are uh, mounties shoot. the Canadian no oil the mounties. damn the damn water guys the freaking epa we they got EPA. EPA. They got EPA rules up there as well. Yeah. Where did the F come in? What's that? Where did the F thing come in? Uh, I, missing on stuff going through my head. I EPA. Though. I don't know. If they. They are not. Do alphabet in reverse. Yeah. To get to yeah. Well, it's usually usually when I'm saying EPA, it's F E P A. So, I, I usually put those initials in there. So. Yeah. I, I don't think they're as hard up in Canada as they are in Idaho. Don't seem like no, it. actually, believe yeah. it or not, these these the uh, the people here in Idaho, they actually like the water districts and all that stuff. They do stuff for here. They do stuff for Washington. They do it for Utah and Alaska. I was like, ah, wow, dang. okay. I guess I guess here in Idaho they got a lot of pull somehow, but yeah. I reckon, man, Rich, you are you there, Rich? Hello. Yeah, I'm here. I had it on mute. Oh, you've just been <laughs> awful quiet tonight. Yeah. I, I bet yeah. you just... Huh? Okay. You, just you guys are just talking. Cool. Oh, yeah. We're just jabbering. You know that. That's what we That's what we do, Rich. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, next week, next week we won't be just jabbering. I'm going to have on a special guest, and I hope everybody can come back and, and enjoy it. Uh, I'm actually going to have somebody. I'm not going to say the name yet because I don't okay. want to mess it up. Okay. Uh, but... Uh, she actually works up here at the mine in Elk City, and she's an assayer. And I thought it would be great and interesting information right. to actually have her come on and talk about, you know, what she does and how she does it, and what, you know how she got into it and stuff like that. So it should be interesting because you know what? I, I haven't talked to that many assayers. I haven't either. I want where the gold is on our claims. I just want to know what she's a saying. <laughs> That's all <laughs> I want to know. Will she know about them Idaho permits? Oh yeah, I well, think she'll she, know quite a bit about it. She might, right? She well, that's why the, the gold is around that that's area? that's one of the reasons why the mine is not running right if now. If she's an assayer, <laughs> I bet she would assay where the gold is around there. She would probably know. You know, I the gold's all around be. here, guys. It's oh, all I'm around sure here. But you know what? Like the old, you know, the tailing piles from the old time miners. You can't even touch those. You can't touch nothing in that state. You can't like. touch no mining. You can't do any. It's <clears> here. It's gonna be. It's something. Yeah, I just, I'm just saying, it's Stealth something. Stealth mining, that's what it is. Because I thought about, I thought about doing, you know, some uh, panning through the, the old tailing piles and stuff like that, and they won't even let you touch the. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous because they say it's going to release mercury back in the water. I'm like, well, where did the mercury it, come though? from? What's I that, guess you, you just can't, you just can't move them. You can't dig them. You can stand so there with your hand you can on it. Touch them. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of them, and man, there a lot of them look nice. Like you could actually do some good panning through them, but they just they're yeah. Mm. It is what it is. It's Californication boys. That's all I can say. I reckon. Yeah, I I don't know. I think it's crazy. I think you just should stealth all your equipment and be stealth miners. Yeah, just move on. Right next to the road. That's about right the only way. <laughs> Well, like I said, Dennis got water permits, so that'll give us, we could use water. Well, yeah, that's and awful that's, nice. That's just the thing. Yeah. You know? Well, I just hope but, you guys can get in there and do some mining. That's all I hope. So that's why I said you guys will keep us informed each week, you know? Now, Scott, have you at least went into the water? No. Hell no. You haven't even walked into it. need just a to permit. Feel, <laughs> just to play Dude, around the class. He hasn't done nothing. You can't fish. You're right. You're right, Dennis. I've been here a whole month and done nothing. You can't it fish. It makes me feel so good. You can't fish, right, Scott? Without a... You, gotta <laughs> you can't a, fish without a permit. Without a permit. <laughs> permit. You can't probably swim without a permit. Because you might pee you in the wear water. You shoes in the creek. Yeah. Well, if you put your shoes in the creek, you'd be putting something nope. in the creek. Dirt. So you can't the the only that. really good thing is that there is a hot springs right here on the Red River that people go to all the time. So really? There is a hot, there is a hot tub. That's pretty cool. <laughs> You guys That's should cool. check that out. Yeah, that would be interesting. Uh, 
that that see that sounds like something pretty cool man yeah no, like as of this weekend i have seen like usually you see a forestry truck you know one or two going through town here lately you're going to see 10 to 12 throughout the whole day it's it's crazy they're wow. they're just out they're waiting because they they know people's going to start putting their dredges and stuff in so they're just waiting it's crazy. Well, you guys keep us informed. Like I said, Sunday, we talk to you. Let us know what you guys found out. And things like that. You know, how it's going. I want to hear details. <laughs> details. Details. Unfiltered. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Unfiltered details Sunday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And be, by the way, Dennis, before you get off here, don't forget, I need to have your email. Send it through on Facebook on Messenger. But give me your email because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you some stuff, by the way. On the Facebook? Yeah, because I, I had it like two two weeks ago. But like I said, Dennis hasn't been on for you know, quite some time. So uh -huh. I've been able to. Well, right. when they work you 12 to 16 hours a day, it's pretty much work and sleep, work and sleep. Yeah, yeah right. I can understand. I figured you're still doing that. Yeah, that's what we have figured. Just a saying. That's what we have figured. Interesting. All right, so anything else we need to go through tonight? See you Sunday. I think we covered everything. Good night, <laughs> good night, <laughs> Captain. Have a golden night. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, golden family. <laughs> good night, gold people. <laughs> We're out of here. Don't forget to join us Sunday night at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. We'll be here, all of us, Scott too, and Chad, the whole bunch. We'll be here. So, And get out there and live life before life isn't there to get out there, too. <laughs> yeah, no no lost treasures this Sunday because we're going to be on the plane. Right, so. Dennis will be on the road. If you need to pick up the lost treasures when I get back. <laughs> right. And Don't forget about Tuesday night hangout. At Thank you, Rich. Tuesday night hangouts at... 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time with Ed, Jess, and Dan over there on their YouTube channel, Tuesday Night Hangouts. What's today's Wednesday? Oh, yeah, so Tuesday. I'll remind you again. Yeah, I actually, I, actually got to, I actually got to catch that show last week. Oh, well, there you go, see? Sorry. And I, I think it was last week. Ray was on there, Ray Roos also. See? Yeah, I think it was last uh, week. That one last, oh, I don't know, last week. Yesterday was Carrie Tucker. Right, yesterday. Was yeah, yeah, I didn't catch it yesterday. I I, mean, I think it was last week when I caught oh, it. Okay. All right, well, be sure to check that out. So until then, we're out of here. Good night, everybody. See you Good Sunday. Night. Gold digger. Right. Bye, y'all. Good night, all. Be sure to tune in <laughs> next Sunday at 7.30 for another great show. For updates and more info, please go to www.prospectorsradio.com.